Hello and welcome to a review of the LEGO Star Wars set, The Lightsaber Duel. This was part of the initial 1999 wave. Um, it's a little set, very little, very cute, and there's something super charming about it that I can't put my finger on. Actually, I can put my finger on it. I'll put it on right, I'll, I'll put it on right now. And that, and that. So this set basically, um, back in the day, uh, in the early days of LEGO Star Wars, for those first few waves, They'd sort of do this thing where the sets, um, the themed sets would come in two for Phantom Menace. So you had this set and you had the um, Sith Infiltrator, which was kind of like, you know, had the same speeder, had Darth Maul. It was a larger set. So this was kind of a bit of a compliment or a smaller version where, yes, this is definitely like, you know, I, there's a lot of repeating elements. Like you got Darth Maul and the speeder that's in that set as well. But also, it has the, a Jedi character to kind of fight him again, to fight him, and it's got this nice little bit of scenery. They also did that with the Naboo Swamp, uh, which paired well with the um, the Gungan Sub and the um, Anakin's Pod Racer, which didn't pair well with the Mos uh, Espa pa, Mos Espa Pod Race. I think that's what it's called. Uh, but you see, you see what I'm talking about. Like this is the small uh, variant to the large set that. The, you know, the Sith Infiltrator is the large, this is the small. Kind of like a Galaxy Explorer to Space Cruiser kind of thing. Now this set itself um, gives us a lot in a small package. It's kind of like the essence of LEGO Star Wars All-in-One. You've got really all you need for a play scenario. You've got a little terrain build, two characters, a conflict, and a little speeder, a little uh, vehicle. And, you know, giving Darth Maul the main villain um, I mean, I guess, who would it be Palpatine? The main uh, antagonist of the Phantom Menace in such a small set was a big win for the time. And you get two chrome lightsabers, which is super cool. Like, I mean, I, I, bet, I bet the chrome lightsabers alone would be worth whatever this retail back in the day, what, like $7? Uh, let's take a better look at Darth Maul. He's got a hood and it's, oh, things are coming loose. And he's got a cape, which is cool. Uh, Lego, uh, during this time, gave a lot of characters capes. They loved giving capes out. Uh, yeah, he has this very intricate, detailed um, face print. Looks pretty modern. It really, um, you know, modern in a way that this doesn't look outdated. This looks like he could fit right in with uh, modern Lego. And, yeah, he's got a red lightsaber. It only has one side, though. It's not the dual-sided you'd expect from Darth Maul because, um, you know, this is the, 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 in the movie, he doesn't reveal that he has the super double lightsaber until the climactic battle. So this is just the, that five second battle on Tatooine before they leave. The other guy we've got is Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, he has a unique hairpiece, which is the, f um, which at the time was the first new male hairpiece that was produced in 20 years. It's, this is a brand new conditioned figure of him basically. And it doesn't fit very well. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't have a lot of suction, but it is a really intricate design. And again, it looks like it could be still used today. Um, I love his face print so much. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, the early Star Wars sets and Harry Potter sets have like, seem to have their own like little consistent art styles. And all the Star Wars characters have these like sort of, they have the, you know, I guess you could say that's like classic Lego eyes but they remind me more of like puppets in a way, or I don't know, like dolls, and they're really cute. This torso print feels, uh, the line weight feels a bit different than the face. It has a bit of a more cartoony style almost. And I had a bunch of this print back when I was little, uh, and I always thought like, oh, wow, that, that, that's like, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know, it was just like, I it was like, I knew it was Star Wars, but I couldn't put my finger on where it was from. And Qui-Gon Jinn has a green lightsaber, so he is the other dude there. And together, I think um, Qui-Gon did come in a lot of sets, but, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's so nice to have all of this in one little package. But uh, there are problems. The first one is the speeder. It's, a, it's pretty cute, you know? Uh, I love cute little builds, especially when they use uh, old gray, old dark gray and old brown, you know? It's, it's like, it makes even the smallest little incon on inconsequential bits of the set feel unique. Uh, yeah, this is the wrong color. I'm sorry. I didn't have the right piece. I pieced this together. I'm sorry. But the thing that I hate about this is that Darth Maul can't fit into it. So, like, let's try a few approaches. Like, look, there's like, it looks like there's enough space, right? Try to fit him standing. 
and the cape gets crushed. Try to fit him in sitting, the cape gets d obliterated. Like, even in the photography, they couldn't even get that right. Because it's just, it, you have to destroy the cape. And that's so stupid. <laughs> like, I don't know, they should have designed it. They should have either not have him had a cape, or they should have designed it to where he can actually sit in there with it. Because otherwise, it's like, okay, great. You can't even, you know, don't, like... He's kind of incompatible. It sucks. Um, but that's really my only problem with this set. Uh, I actually really like the terrain build. Something about the photography of this and, like, the actual build itself, it feels so arid and dry. Like, it feels brutal. Like, look at this battle. Like, I don't know. There's something about it that's just... Ooh, I love the I love the atmosphere kind of builds, and I don't the the color scheme too, like the um the old brown and the old dark gray again. I love those colors. They just build kind of like I don't know. This feels less like a terrain build and more just like a background set piece. But it's an intriguing background set piece. It's a bit mysterious, and I know it doesn't look like the thing it's supposed to look like from the movie. But honestly, I do not care. I just think it's very interesting in its own way. And yeah, um, I guess I can look at the, um, the manual. I have the manual for this set. Um, I keep, I'll blabber on about the photography in these um, early Star Wars sets forever, but this is just so nice looking. Uh, Qui-Gon and Darth Maul just look so crisp. I love the lighting they imply. Uh, I love that old Phantom Menace uh, logo that they used. Uh, it's so silly looking. <laughs> you got Jar Jar there. Uh, is that a hand I see to the far left? Oh, and I guess Lord Sidious is there too. Um, interesting, because he wasn't uh, really in the um, sets until later. Same with Princess Amidala. She didn't have a um, figure in at least that form for, I think, another 10 years, if not longer. Oh, uh, yeah. We've got uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, Darth Maul. I love the... the I l really like this font. Uh, this is a fun font. It's futuristic, but also being like... I don't know. It gives, it gives off diner vibes. Uh, Dexter Jetster would blush if he saw this. Oh, there, there the cape fits. That's a lie. It doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't fit, man. Yeah, and I want to apologize. I did uh, have to substitute a few pieces, but I have been so locked. Nothing really going on there. But in the back, we see an alternate build. And again, I love the lighting they used in all these shots. Like, look at that. I love how it's always the set being built or something. It's like, I don't know. It's like a... It's like kind of a behind the scenes kind of thing. It's almost as if they're actors. Like something about the, um, you know, I said the marionette-esque nature or puppet-like nature of the face prints, uh, as well as the simplicity, uh, almost looking like they're in costume. And then here you have behind the scenes as they're building the um, set, a uh, set of a play almost. And then they have an alternate build. Uh, these are always so good. Lego Star Wars, uh, the first wave, the first years, had so many incredible alternate builds. Prob maybe the best in all of LEGO, um, if I was to say something a bit bold. Um, this triangle looks really ugly, though, so maybe maybe the set isn't all I cracked it up to be. But yes, Lightsaber Duel is a great little set. It would have been an excellent buy during the time. You would have gotten a, a taste of what the Phantom Menace had to offer, uh, you know? Uh, I like to think that these first Phantom Menace sets were based off of the trailer footage, so that's why they made an entire set based on a battle that appears for five seconds, let alone two, <laughs> let alone two, because the Sith Infiltrator, like, that appears for, like, five seconds also, I think, <laughs> but, yeah, that's all, uh, I'm sure, I, I'm sure somebody's impressed that I was able to blab on about the set for, what, like, ten minutes, nine minutes, that's all, Darth Maul, he's so cool.